Product 7-508 Wimshurst machine. The Wimshurst machine has a wooden base, cast metal frame with two pulleys, pulley wheels, and a steel axle with smaller pulleys that are, is attached to the insulating plates. Here you'll see the metal frame, the two large cast pulleys. Uh, there's a metal axle with two smaller pulleys on the inside. Um, the two insulating plates are turned by a crank that's mounted down on the, the frame. The insulating panels also have aluminum sectors on them which contain buttons. You'll see the aluminum sectors and then there's a but button on each aluminum sector. Um, you'll also notice a rod that rides along um, the face of the each side of the plate and at the end of these rods are uh, brushes. Um, there are also two, two curved plates on each side of the insulating plate. These plates um, collect electric, electric charges which are fed to the spark gap which consists of two balls mounted on um, metal rods with ebonite handles. The spark gap and length can be changed by moving the rods. The spark gap rods are connected to two Leyden jars. Here you'll see a better view of the spark gap. Um, there's two balls here and you can adjust the gap by moving the rods. The farther away the balls are, the longer the spark is, the closer, the shorter the spark. Um, I'll turn it to so you can see the spark. There's a lesson plan included with the unit which has operating instructions and eight different experiments that can be performed with the Wimshurst machine. Um, it's very important to store the Wimshurst machine in a dry room. If it is subjected to high humidity, the Wimshurst machine should be put in front of an electric heater or heat register to dry it out. Um, as far as uh, shipping, it is the Wimshurst machine is included in a, enclosed in a plastic bag. Um, there's foam padding around it and it's placed in a corrugated box for protection.